Welcome to Running Down the Clock, where we break down all of this week's big news, events, and controversies from the National Football League. Over the next 45 minutes, we will give you basic fan perspective and opinion on the most important stories and moments happening now. So, let's start the clock. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Running Down the Clock. This is our final episode of the season. I'm Puya Racy, and I'm here with Tyler Walzak, as always. And I believe, Tyler, you brought a special guest for us. It's a former player. Is it potential Hall of Famer, Super Bowl champ? Who who do you have for us here? <laughs> I mean, I wish. I wish we could bring somebody of that caliber. Um, we will, in a little bit, be joined by a uh, first... Um, inaugural season ending fan of the national football league um my girlfriend dylan we're gonna have some questions oh your girlfriend her. you brought your yeah. girlfriend today the only zero person time hall house. of famer yeah. the only other person in my house yeah okay she actually demanded to be on she okay. did not uh she said well if, first of all we apologize for being very late to this last season ending um podcast but we do have other jobs we do have things we have to do and you know what sometimes it just it just happens. And before Dylan comes on here, Puya, do you have, I don't want to talk too much about the Super Bowl because I feel like everybody in, in the world has been talking about it for the last week, week and a half. Uh, well, I was, I was just going to say the reason we're late is we were so heartbroken by the Super Bowl. We couldn't bring ourselves to, to talk about it. I, it was a boring Super Bowl. I, Three quarters. You know, yes. It started football. that way. I, I have to say, if it were to have been scripted, they did write a good script. I thought that the game started off slow, defensive. Slow. Each team was a little bit timid to do much offensively. Yep. And then it slowly started opening up and it crescendoed to quite an exciting finish. The finish it was exciting. finished on the final play of the game, as overtime sometimes does. And I thought that they actually choreographed that entire game quite well on an entertainment value scale right like it was very entertaining overall if you look at the game from start to finish it actually got more and more entertaining as it went on not yes. to say that it was scripted but had the nfl wrote a script that's exactly how it would have gone all i will say is that the one we did ribs because you said you wanted to do ribs so then um, Dylan wanted to do ribs but the food was good for us the game was like three quarters of boring football is not a good game. And I said to the group chat of my buddies, like, is this going to be one of those games where we get three quarters of very boring football, but the finish is good. So everybody just remembers that instead of how bad this game actually was. It was seven, three, 10, three or something like that for the longest time until I think the third quarter over hit at 9.5, it hit the over with like two minutes left. And then the fourth quarter was good and overtime was good. But it, the, other than that, the game was subpar. It's the same as Usher's performance at halftime. Very good uh, when you think about it, but very boring until Lil John and Ludacris came out. Every, uh, I, you know my stance. Every Super Bowl halftime show sucks. But I, I thought the problem was the defenses on both teams were so solid. The offenses let both teams down. Yeah. More so for the 49ers, you know Patrick Mahomes is going to come back and do something. You can't leave it a one-score game when you're playing against Mahomes. He's shown way too many times that he's not a guy that count out of the game. That was what killed the 49ers was that they couldn't get a score on all those times they shut down Mahomes' offense. Yeah, and the, They needed something more than to leave it at a one-score game. The one last thing before we get to our guest is the overtime coin toss and the 49ers taking the ball. What did you think about that? So I can understand why they took the ball. Even if they were confused, their logic didn't make sense about not knowing the rules because they didn't go for the touchdown. That's exactly the problem. So none of that made sense. But also like the footage shows that uh, use check is hearing, oh, I didn't know that was the rules. So obviously somebody in the coaching staff is telling him. So the coaching staff knew the rules. Uh, and the other thing is, I think their defense was just gassed. I, I can see why they took the ball only for the fact that they didn't want to put the defense right back out there because they thought they might give up too much as we saw that their defense did give up too much in overtime. And 
it's because their defense was just gassed. I, I, I that's actually probably the best take I've heard about why they would take the ball because yes, their their defense almost the only reason that. Chiefs didn't win the game in regular time was because they ran out of time. They were driving down the football field to score a touchdown to win the game, but they ran out of time, so they had to kick a field goal. So that's actually the best take I have heard. And if the 49ers were smart, they'd say, listen, our def- exactly what you just said. Our defense was gassed. We needed to give them a break. But if they had just gone for a touchdown in overtime, then then yes, taking the ball first for that third possession would make sense. But the fact that they didn't do that kind of is just one of those things that's like doesn't There's really one other thing I want to talk about. You know I wanted to talk about this the entire season and last season. Where do you stand now on Brock Purdy? Yeah, you can't say anything bad about Brock Purdy anymore. I actually think they should have let him throw the ball more in yeah. that game. Yeah, no, he wasn't like he, yeah, a crazy was like... amazing, but he wasn't bad. His throws weren't costing him the game. No, he was doing well enough. They should have they they overused McCaffrey, which I I can understand. But man, used that one shot. It showed him McCaffrey just gasping for air. They remind me of that uh, James Harrison end to end touchdown. Yeah, in the, the playoffs. The, the, with the, and uh, he was just out of gas. Machine. Like yeah. McCaffrey's as well tuned a machine as you could get. You don't see those guys that tired that often like that. Couldn't yeah. breathe. You know. Yeah, they didn't let they were Curry overusing do them. his thing. Which he could do. I, I'm excited to see Purdy next year because he, you're right. He's proved everybody wrong this year. Last year, rookie season. This year, he's proved everybody wrong. There's nothing bad you can say about the guy, really, at this point. And they'll be back next year because they have the same team. The 49ers have the same team they did this year. So their odds are going to be very high for the Super Bowl next year. Yeah, so that's our Super Bowl wrap-up. Let's get to... <laughs> the guest we have again, everyone's heard everybody's take on the Super Bowl. Um, this is a first time full season NFL viewer. Um, so fresh eyes this is our first guest as well. And again, she's demanded to be here. It's not like we had a choice. This was okay. her decision, and I was not allowed to do this podcast. I, I, I have up. a question for our guest before you well, even got any questions. Okay, go because before I was saying, can we at least season, introduce her before you met Tyler? What did you know about football? What was your impression of football? Hi, so, like, Puya. You look very cute with your little backwards hat. So everybody, this is <laughs> this is Dylan. She is my girlfriend. We live together. Uh, and she's been introduced, obviously, through football every Sunday with me. And go ahead, answer that question for Puya, if you, if you remember the question, which I don't. Was the it- question was, before you met Tyler, yes. before he taught you about football, before you watched football this season, well, what did you know about football? Like, did you know any players? Did you know any rules? Did you understand the game? Do you have any memories of watching it? Anything? I watched... Did you know a single team? <laughs> I watched football so that I could do homework because it was the perfect amount of multitasking because I would be so bored that I would actually accomplish schoolwork. Wait, what? You watched football while you did homework, like in high school or college? Yeah, correct. You had you would just have it in the background? Yes. With friends, because unlike you, other people enjoy watching sports with friends. Let's take it easy. Yeah. Um, so I knew very little. I played one summer in flag football. At like camp? or At camp. I know that you stop a lot. What do you mean you stop a lot? You what randomly stop. Yeah. It, it's an anaerobic exercise. Anaerobic exercise. Sprint, break, sprint. Hockey is also an anaerobic exercise. Do you know what that word means? Yeah, there's aerobic where you go for like marathon runners are aerobic exercising. Anaerobic is short bursts, break, short bursts, break, short bursts, break. Or I'm Damn, completely I'm wrong. Impressed. Yeah, I, I think I I'm right. I can't Google you right now to win an argument. You're, you're, you're both know? looking at me as if I'm going to be. I was saying, you have to have the answer here. Like we can't, someone has to settle this. Somebody has to settle this. Go I, I'm, I'm going to give you the points time. on it. Tal. I'm going to give you the points on it. And yeah. if anyone's you even listening, I feel like there's not, like nobody reached out. Did anyone reach out to you, Puya, and said, where's the podcast from this last week? No. Okay. Nobody, nobody reached cares. out to me. So nobody cares. So it's so literally, good. this is just for the three of us for <laughs> Whenever the first person dies, we just play the entire series over at the funeral, and it's twelve I think hours. Jordan will appreciate it. Twelve actually. to twenty-four hours worth of yeah. Jordan is the only one that's been like, hey, you bro, know what? It could be like a tontine. Whoever lives the longest gets all the recordings. It's gonna be me, like so. the Beatles type situation. Sell them off. 
Sure. If they have any value. <laughs> I don't think they're going to have any value. No. You know what? We should put them in a box and bury them so that whenever the aliens come take over, they find the box when we're all gone and go, hey, uh, people are actually pretty smart. Glad we decided early on we weren't talking that much about football on this football podcast. Eh? Well, we're going to talk about football, but every once in a while we have to talk about aliens because they will come and they will find our tapes. Yeah. And then we'll specifically to for this podcast. Yeah. yeah. Just checking. Cool. Well, I mean, cool. like they're going to, we might, if we might be the first thing they find and then we're the leaders of the free world in their eyes. Who is looking at you? Like, can you, doesn't enough, that make enough, sense? Enough if them? we're the first ones <laughs> to be found? No, I, I, I think I got to take back one point from the anaerobic uh, argument there. Did just for Google that, it? that last babble. Like, I don't yeah. know what you were talking about. Anaerobic exercises and aerobic exercises. Yeah. Aerobic exercises are for distance. Anaerobic is short-term bursts and then break. Anywho. Anyway, <laughs> back to the topic at hand. So, so Dylan, what was your impression of the season? Of the Super Bowl, first of all. Let's talk about the the game itself. No, I think we should talk about football in general because Okay, well, it's you, not your podcast, but that's well, like, we asked the questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, because you warned me, and I mean... When we started dating. Yes. I mean, I gave you a good warning. I said, this is some Sundays. This is what I do. And we, we met in November. So the height of this was the height of the lions first celebration Mm -hmm. of the, like Dan Campbell's second year. So the, they were one and eight and then they came back and finished nine and eight or something like that. Um, When they beat the Packers to send the Packers sent out of the playoffs. Like that was when we started dating was when the Lions were playing good football, but they've been bad for 30 years. So you've only really seen the good Lions. I'm kind of sad about that. Why? Because I'm a true fan. I'm a fake true fan. I'm, I want you to know that I'm in it. For Dude, everybody <laughs> wants to talk about how tough they had it growing up. Nobody wants to take, yeah. oh, I was the spoiled rich kid. You That's know? exactly Everybody it. wants to talk about the sob stories. Oh, no, we had it rough too. You know, like my team lost a lot of games as well. My flag football team, you know, I got tackled into the mud one time. It was terrible. <laughs> but that's exactly right. Is that, that, yes, you, I, so a lot of people this year tried to message and reach out to me and say, rooting for the Lions, rooting for the Lions. And I told them, yeah. I don't want you, don't, we don't need you. We don't want you. And that's how I will feel forever is like, yes, we've been shit on for 30, my 38 years of life. We've been shit on for my father's 60 something years of life. So don't come to me saying we're rooting for you at the height of our team. Like, I don't want to hear that. I don't, I don't care for that. We're there lows and highs. And I will only kind of accept new fans that, um, like, forced like into that the are situation. forced into it. Yeah. yeah. Like you didn't really have a choice. <laughs> That's actually one of our questions. Like when you, did you have a team that you kind of rooted for before or that Maple you cared Leafs. about? The, it's a different <laughs> Well, let's go back to the first question we asked you because we you never yeah. gave her an, a, a, ch- a, a chance to answer. So Dylan, let's go back. What was yes. your take on the football season? This season. You can't hold this long. I'm on live I, radio. I'm thinking. I, you don't like when I think before I speak. I hate when you think. No, it's neither one. Of, that's the one thing. Neither one of us thinks before we speak. Just on talk. This. You yeah. just start talking. There's no you thinking. Just start just talking. Talk. Now I got to go back and I got to edit out that 30 second pause of silence. I think you're going to leave it. Um, I. It was interesting because I, I was prepared for one game a week. To me, that's if, what a season was, right? Like, If you watched... I can add to that, yes. when you first started <laughs> watching, you messaged me and you're like, I think it's too much. He watches too much football. And I said to you, no, no, no. This is the right, <laughs> like, this is what football is. The right amount and you of thought, no, I get it, but it's still, it's too much. And I think you didn't understand when nope. someone says, I'm a football fan. Yep. You didn't understand that inherently that meant I watch all the football games. Like if you are a fan of a TV show. Yeah. You watch all the episodes okay, of the TV Puya, show. Okay, but Puya, I bet Don't you I watch it. No, I can interrupt. Show. Cut no. him off. It's his show. I bet I watch more football than you do. And no. I am not a football fan. And no. I'd argue that I, this year, <laughs> have consumed more football or football, not paraphernalia. Related. Like, sub, yes. Conversations. Than, than you have. Name one play and the result of the play during the season. I don't know how to describe oh, it, but I can uh, tell you. That's a, that's so, a, that's I a can tough. Tell you, you have bad teams... viewing comprehension. It's like you're putting it on, but you don't actually know what's happening. I mean, I know when things you are going well and when they're not going well, but I, I can tell you about the, the tush push. 
And that stupid little little bump. What is the tush push? I don't know. Okay. Name three you players use your booty involved to in push it. somebody into the out. Name three players involved in it. Involved in the and tush push. There's been lots of them. They talk nope. about it a lot. There's one team that does it and you know all the players involved. I feel like there's it's only two the players team. involved. Sure. So if she can name two out of three players involved on that team, just name one player. Name one the, player. The best part about this question is that they're two very famous people. And name I know one them. Team. Yes. Name the team. Name the team. There's there no way because the team San is San Francisco. The, no, it's the Philadelphia. Uh, uh, I wouldn't. I. I'm like that's. Yeah. Nope. Nope. But she watched more games than I did. <laughs> I did. I yeah. still will die on that hill. I will. It's. I will say this in in her defense, only because I, I do have to yep. spend the rest of this night and forever with her. So, um, she was around for all ten a.m. till eight thirty p.m. Right. in front of the TV watching all the games. She might have fallen asleep during every single one of those games, but she was there for that. And then I also made her listen to the Pat McAfee show for three hours every single day during the week, which she does now listen to. By herself. I'm an um, also, the answer to the question is Jason Kelsey is Ugh. very heavily involved. Which, oh, Jason. Oh, oh. Sorry. Yeah, Jason sorry. Kelsey. Sorry. Every, did, Got ahead of not, myself. Puya, did you not feel that Jason Kelsey kind of took a baby face turn and then Travis Kelsey took like a heel turn absolutely. during these playoffs? Like, what is absolutely. a baby face turn? Uh, so but he was never a heel. Fans. Oh, right. No, but he, he, was, he was just Jason Kelsey. Now he's yeah. like a fan favorite, like Oh yeah, I would be Jason Kelsey. Shirt off, yeah. Yep. Whereas Travis is now kind of hated amongst the people. Yeah. Maybe not hated. They're like... wrestling terms. Babyface is a person you root for, and a heel is a person you you don't want to root for. So, boys, this is a football podcast, but it's wrestling included. <laughs> also, the it's Rock is very much back in. The Rock is very much back in. Yeah, wrestling. I know that you are a Stone Cold guy, but like the Rock is very much back in wrestling. He's there like every week now. Yeah, I, I heard. I, I just I stopped watching wrestling at 12 years old. So I know everything from when I was a child through 12. Yeah. That's when The Rock was popular was when we were 12. Yeah. yeah. I'm with you. That that era was what we watched. But it's back now. It's back now. The Rock had a good Pat McAfee little appearance. Yeah, they're buddies. They're yeah, buddies now. They got nice and tipsy. Yeah. They're mm-hmm. buddies now. Drinking tequila. Right. Um. Okay, so wait, did you never? I'll back up to you. Never the, answered the two the question. You just tried to shit on Puya, and then he ruined Pretty much. you. Yeah. Um, two televisions. Thinking I was walking into football for like four hours on Sunday. Yeah, wrong. I'm like I can do wrong. I can do my own activities for four hours on Sunday. Nope, nope, nope. Never mind and when it's like your mother's birthday and you've got things to do. It's also, dinners to have when people. Do you remember that? Country. Do you remember the conversation we had about her mother's birthday and that we would have to miss it if the Lions were playing? Yeah, she's on board now. Okay, her yeah, mom's birthday bit. is is less important. Right. I mean, we can just adjust the, the celebration. It doesn't fall during the football season, though, does it? Yes, September, same time every year. Oh, she's screwed. September. <laughs> yeah, she's screwed. September. Yeah, it could be Hype. a preseason game. Who cares? What do you mean September eighth or September seventh or something is the start of the season? Ah, ah. See, As you're a, a fan like we are. <laughs> you know these things, Puya. Hey, wait. You didn't explain that. You didn't answer this question. But how did you feel about this, this season? season? Like, as your first time watching a full season, going through the emotions that I went through with less interest. Well, like I, I don't think I can compare on season to season because it's my first no. This season. is your first season, but like, but. No, what did we, you think that you wouldn't like? What did you think that you would hate that you ended up liking? What do you? I mean, hate? I wish I paid more attention. I guess you started like to the pay first attention in the few months. I was like, these are all so irrelevant. Like this literally doesn't matter. And now I'm very aware that every game, every game. That's I don't the thing know, about the NFL. Swearing every I know we're swearing swear. podcast. Like swear. every fucking game matters. Like we're wrestling for a while, but you watch more games than me. <laughs> I thought I watch more games. I don't listen to the podcast. Come on. <laughs> Not, yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's not what watching a game is. No, you gotta pay attention to every being play. in the proximity of there's it too being much to on. pay attention to, especially when the first two months you're getting yelled at for asking questions that you just don't know the answers to and you don't know what to look for. Whereas now, also like a season in, I know you know more clearly what is relevant and what is or what things mean, I guess. 
Yes, planes. And it was just the beginning. It was like every stuff. every minute is like, well, what just happened? And what does this mean? And what does this call for? And what's going on? And it's hard to follow, especially when your partner's yelling at you to stop asking. Not yelling, it's yeah, hard yeah, to follow should. when you're not paying attention. Yeah, I, I <laughs> completely too. agree with you. Yes. When you're sleeping, it's kind of... If you have to ask funny. what the penalty was for every time because you didn't watch the play or you listen to the referee's explanation. No, but he can watch things. And before the good or bad well, announcer you watch explains a... it, yeah. he's like, oh, this... And I'm like, I don't I even know what the words were that you said. Never mind what happens. And he'll be like, watch, watch. And they slow it down. And then he'll be like, see how the ball or this or he dropped or his shoulder or whatever. Because but... that's what you put 20 hours a week every week for, for 38 18 weeks. Years. For 30 <laughs> years. That's where you get to. Yeah. yeah. So you I know, you see the, into you this. See it, you see and... it all before it happens. And it is, I mean you're the first person I've had patience with in terms of answering your questions yes. because before I'd just be like, I can't be around people that are asking me questions during football games. Um, but you, I feel like you've got through the first season's the hardest season. Now I feel like you might be more like and more excited about the season. Once it starts. And that's not no, I, I think will I be will be more excited, but I think you're going to be more excited this year than you were last year. Yes. Maybe not more excited than you, but yeah, more excited than previous so Dylan, yeah. that was the point I was trying to make to you when I was trying to say that, no, 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 Tyler watches football. Inherently, this is what football is. Yeah, but when it's you're not explaining that to somebody who doesn't know what watching well, I was, exp is. I was explaining it to you. I was, that's the whole thing. I was. Well, you did a really bad you. job. Then, you were <laughs> accepting the answer because in your head, that's not what watching football was. And that's what I was trying to tell you. What he told you existed before your introduction to football. Yes. What he did already was pre-existing from the 1960s when it used to be always on Sundays. And that was yeah. the day. Yeah. So this already there. existed just... for decades. You don't. Like, you only every... discovered it now, so it seemed strange. However, that is inherently what watching football means. I just still refuse to believe that everyone because out there that say, watches I watch football one, watches my one team. twenty hours of football a week. Like I don't. I I know for a fact that people who watch their team play do not watch. The Thursday because they games, watch their team. The they games, don't watch the... football. They watch yeah, their team. We're football fans, but we're li I'm a Lions fan. Yeah. Who is the Lions fan? Uh, but we're football fans like at heart. So like Thursday night, that's the first game of the year. And then every Thursday from you know what? Month, that's and actually then the best it, December, Saturday night. It's like that's the best clarification I think we've addressed is you're not a Lions fan. Well, you are a Lions, Lions fan, fan but you're a, a football a, fan. A football nope, fan. that was not the clarification. That was always stated as I'm <laughs> trying to explain <laughs> once to again to you, which I explained via text, which I could pull up. All of this was told to you. You just didn't want to accept that that was the reality of the situation. But I'm a, like, I love podcasts. I love television. I love the beach. I also... Juggle, beach, I don't know. I just trying to podcast. throw in something else. Throw in the beach, electronic or media. So you've related. been to every beach. <laughs> every <laughs> beach. I don't know where you're going with this, but I, yeah. I got a trivia for you. I got a trivia. A Puya Tyler trivia. Fine, I didn't want to point. It's cool. Since yeah, the day on. we've met, how many football games have Tyler and I watched together? Since you and Tyler have met, how many games have you two watched together? Yeah. Couldn't even tell you when you met. Um, I'm gonna say one. Well, this was a Dylan trivia. Okay. Zero. Not a Tyler trivia. Not somebody who was present for them. That's... I think the answer is one. <laughs> then one. <laughs> is it one? Well, what was Dylan's guess? Honestly, I started to try to do math in my head. And when I remembered you were going to get were. huge, you were going to go like 35. No, I was going to say still like eight. But then I remembered that you are you. And yeah. the fact that there was even one. It was one. A it was last year. Philadelphia, New York. I know which one it was because you sat right where I'm sitting right now and you guys had the wine. You had the pink the pink wine. We always had the pink wine. And no, it wasn't there. It was actually on the couch watching the game, not where you are. <laughs> oh, that was just a podcast recording. <laughs> yeah, well, we're currently in the player. kitchen. Like, yeah, how the hell are we going to watch the game from the spot <laughs> we're sitting in now? Wait, which well, game was which game was it? It was the Philly. It was uh, the um, when the uh, Eagles beat the Giants in the uh, second round of the playoffs last year. Yeah, that's what right. What game was that? Yeah. I feel like we've also watched a Seahawks game at some point together. Oh, two. We watched yeah. the 49ers Seahawks. That's what I'm saying. We watched at the, I, that uh, was the, the game I thought was one. 
sounds okay, like was Tyler two. got half a See, point. Here we're his... getting up. We're getting up his... there too. Maybe getting we can there. find a third. Maybe we can find a third that we've watched together at some point. N- not counting the games we've worked where like the, it's on the background, like on oh, somebody's phone or something. No, that doesn't count. We That's used a... to make this kid that worked for us write out the. Uh, do you remember, you remember this? Obviously, yeah, I uh, remember. Yeah, write out the offensive passing yards and rushing yards per each team per matchup and then the defensive yards so that we could have betting like that was that kid's job for the day he sounded like a great manager manager. well it worked didn't it It worked (laughs) for us but he had nothing else to do yeah that was we were making fan duel bets right yeah fan duel bets is exactly it so you get half a point for your cardio science thing and i get anaerobic versus aerobic versus aerobic yeah not cardio science but yes and i get one point for you both being wrong on the amount of games. I said that we're both right. We've just broken it down. Yeah, which means oh, I get it. You said eight. I said nothing, actually. You ruined the game. So that's wrong. If you say nothing, then you're inherently wrong. You gave can me we, point by we, being wrong. We talk about Tyler ruining the games. Since I've called you out, I got one call out for Tyler, which I was saving for our last episode. What? Ooh. The thing you did consistently throughout the season was you wouldn't contribute to the notes. And then you pop something on me at the last second, which I had no research on, and I just had no answers to. <laughs> because it's all in my head. The notes are, I guess I do need to be better at the notes. You were very diligent with the notes. Well, it was just your things required a little bit of research on my end. Like, to come up with, do these guys deserve to be first ballot Hall of Famers? It's like, well, I got to do a little bit of analysis. Like, not all of them are going to get in. I need to kind of review this. You know, you'd ask me questions about per- players' past parts of their career. It's like, well, I got to kind of look it up a little bit. I can't just on the fly remember what this guy's yards were in 2011. Yeah, so you, but that's why the notes were easy for me because I could answer those questions. Yeah. Oh, no, because you <laughs> had my thoughts already out there. <laughs> yeah, your thoughts are there. I know exactly what you're talking yeah, about. they were there all week. Well, I mean, I got to make – I was trying to make everyone think that I was a little, just a little bit smarter. Oh, I got that. I, 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 I was well aware of what you were trying to do. Yeah. Trick him. It works. Okay, so next year, thank you for that constructive criticism and feedback. I will be better at the notes. You don't have to be better at the notes. Just tell me what you're going to sabotage me with yeah. in advance. That's that's all. We, that's... You blindsided me all the time with things. <laughs> well, that's how you get the true reaction out of somebody. Yes, you do, but it also ruins a segment where I don't have any <laughs> facts to make a statement with. Yeah, well. Pause and Google. You know. Pause and Google. I mean, we we have paused in Google before, but we're a live show. Yeah. As much as we're not a live show, we're very edited. We're still a live show. I don't, I, I don't I, like it. You know what, very... though? As much as we are edited, we're never edited to fix things. We're just, just edited yeah. to take out gaps. That's it. Yeah. It's there's a lot of long winded pauses when we yeah. talk, which I've noticed that we both need to get better at because we do a lot of this. Yeah, that's and me thinking. Say, like, yeah, what the stop fuck and am think. I say to Tyler this? doesn't like, like when yeah. people. There's no stopping and thinking. Answer speak. the question. Let's go. We got everyone's on a timeline here. People are getting to work. People are walking. People are on their bikes. We gotta, we gotta get this podcast in and out real quick. Get into the viewers' ears. A week late, real quick. Yeah, it is a week. It is a week late. I think it's better now, though, because everyone's... Why would you sit and listen to us? No, everyone's been saturated. Yeah, now we're... Now they they need more content. They want... Newsflash, Tyler. They don't. They don't sit and listen to us. <laughs> no, they don't. No, they don't. <laughs> Somebody out there is listening like, this was a good episode. Somebody. Somebody was thinking, I wonder what happened. We'll never know. They don't reach out to us. When but... Tyler was sick in the fall, remember you went to the hospital? And literally my propane my poisoning one, was that the propane poisoning? No, this was a different time. Panic attack. This was a panic attack. <laughs> just just a separate full hospital. panic. Have you ever had a panic attack before? No. Dude, it's it sounds not, terrible though. It's but it's like not even like I thought a panic attack was just like somebody blowing into a bag, like and it's just like, okay, you can recover from that. Oh no, I think, think I thought it was die. a heart attack. Yeah, I oh, thought no, I was gonna die. Was called. I called, I was like, you have to call the ambulance right now. I'm going to die. Yeah. But but then you get to the hospital and like everything's fine. There's like yeah, you had a panic attack. I would have never thought it would get to the like point where I was like I'm I need to lie down and like just sat in a chair in the kitchen. Like where's the ambulance? I need. I need you know somebody. why I don't have panic attacks? Because I preemptively panic all the time and I just get it out of my system. The small panics. You have small panics. Oh, they're pretty big panics. They're pretty big <laughs> panics all the you time. You too. My goodness. Yeah. Well, my one friend was like, is Tyler okay? I heard he was sick. And I was like, oh, how did you, 
how did you know? It's like, well, I was just listening to his podcast. I'm like, what? <laughs> that was a different podcast. That well, was the have less podcast, maybe. Yeah, that was the Formula One podcast. I've never missed this podcast except for all the times we just don't record it. <laughs> Which is last week. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll mark this down. It's another time to edit the podcast. <laughs> Do we have any more questions for Dylan while she's here? I've had one. Well, no, it. you've had three questions from me. One, maybe 1.5 were answered. But anyway, <laughs> what's what's your expectation for the football season moving forward next year? Are you going to watch games on your own? Are you going to? That's a great question. Are you going to get I'll a jersey? Watch... She is going to get a jersey. I'm getting a jersey. I'd like three. No. You like three? No. No, but if you like three, which three would you like? Well, I know I want Aiden's. Aiden Hutchinson, 97, Detroit Lions. I don't know. I go just more through emotional moments when I just want to commit to people. But who would you commit to is the question. Like, if it wasn't Aiden Hutchinson, who would other people be? See, you're more golf. I'm less golf. I'm. I want uh, a Dan I, Campbell jersey. So he did play for the Lions. So you could technically get that jersey. Yeah. Like, actually, you could, those you would could be actually the two jerseys get his, that I'd like. Dan Campbell's. I think he wore 88 when he played for the Lions. Because to me, I, you don't talk about Dan Campbell enough. Like he to me, like you are more golf, whereas I'm like, this is Dan Campbell's show. No, I just I I know who Dan Campbell was when we got him, um, in terms of like the type of person and leader he was. But Jared Goff, I said on this podcast, like, I don't believe that Jared Goff is a good quarterback. And now I'm like, sign him to an extension for five more years. He's only 28 mm -hmm. years old. Like he should be around for another five years. The Lions should sign him for another five years. Um, we have the uh, our offensive coordinator coming back. They they work very well together. I don't I don't know if I want that was the jerseys, sigh of though. relief for you. That's when things that was got sigh. better. A thousand percent. But I don't know if I want a, I don't know if I want a quarterback jersey. I would I want a Brian Branch jersey. I thought you I want. wanted a um. Oh, I want a Brian Branch jersey for sure. What's the guy's name? Don't know. Not not Mahomes. Nope. No one would. Ma, ma, he's a Lions guy. He gets it in at the end a lot. He runs. Don't know. Uh, David Montgomery? Yeah. That yeah one. I like David Montgomery. I like Jameer Gibbs too, but I think that I'm a very much, I want a defensive. I mean, the jerseys I have are all offensive except for Darius Slay. <laughs> um, but Aiden Hutchinson or Brian Branch, I would for sure want. I want the helmet with the green mouth guard in it. That's yeah, that's Dylan, funny, actually. Another question for you. The answer another is I will watch the Lions games by myself. I will not watch football by myself. Okay. Go on. <laughs> another thing to get introduced to uh, sports heartbreak. How would you feel if the player's jersey you get shortly after gets traded? Yeah, what if you bought an Aiden, Aiden Hutchinson and then a year Because later, that is oh. very much a reality of yeah. jersey ownership. It sucks. My Darius that Slay bought sad. it, and then a year later, he that tried. already sounds sad. Oh, like, I was yeah. rooting for Aiden at the All Star, like when he jumped, like yeah. So she did watch the. She made me watch the All Star, um, the Pro, Pro Bowl. Bowl, the Pro Bowl, yeah, uh, games, which we talked about last two weeks ago. Um, but like, I bought a Darius Slay jersey, and then a year later, Matt Patricia came in and traded him to the Eagles. So you just have to end up being a fan of that player. I think I could do that. Yeah, but it sucks when you wear the jersey. Like you can't wear it again. No, it like, doesn't. You, can you wear a jersey? Purpose. Like Puya, if you bought a jersey of a player who was then traded, would you wear that jersey out again? You can once he retires for sure. Retires, yeah, yes. That's, so that's far the rule. Away. But that's the no, rule. Like, this is the heartbreak. This yeah. is the heartbreak. You can't wear that jersey again until that player retires. Yeah, and that... it's a throwback. It's officially called like a throwback at that point. Because I have a Barry, I got a Calvin, and I have Darius. I have Joy Harrington's. Who did I wear the whole playoff? You wore Darius Slay. Yeah, he's not retired. I, you are the one he'd never wear. <laughs> you know what? That's, That's the one he's you. talking about. Yeah. That is the one I was talking about. I can't wear that jersey. I can't wear that jersey. But I don't know any better. So it's fine. You didn't know no. any better. Yeah. So, <laughs> But you watched more games than me. I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, she had face paint on during the NFC conference football game. She had a Panay Sewell double triangle on her face. I'm sitting here by myself. Why am I painting my face? Um, luck. I actually wanted you to come over for the Super Bowl. 
I heard you had other plans, but I thought that would actually be a fun game for you to be here for because it was low stakes for everyone involved. And all right. we wanted to do was sit and eat, to be honest. Yeah, we did just sit and eat, but it wasn't, I will say this, this was the first time I watched a Super Bowl in my life where I didn't care about it because I was upset that I wasn't in it. Like I've never had the expectations of being in a Super Bowl as a Lions fan, but the fact that we should have been in that game made me not want to watch it. And now the expectation is Lions have to be in the Super Bowl for me to get excited about it. a Super Bowl. It's so funny because your whole thing is you can't be disappointed if you don't have hope. Yeah, but now I have hope. I know that has been the biggest theme of this year is changing from like hope me being like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, you know, they lost or whatever. And or they they disappointed. And he's like, no, no, like, can't be sad. Like, don't have hope. You can't have hope. It's the hope that kills you. It's the hope that kills you. Yeah, but now we have the hope and it's going to kill you. have so much hope. Yeah, my lifespan is going to get shorter now. I was already going to be short. Yeah, but the I hope, it, it kills you, but it's just like life. It's the only thing keeping you going. From yeah. day to day. I believe, I, I, I have hope. I have hope for both of us. <laughs> I had it before. So here if we you go. have no hope in your team, there's no reason to get out of bed in the morning. There's no well, reason to turn on the TV. But there's like no reason to turn on the second TV. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> We've now become people who watch the same game on both TVs too. Well, not I mean... even two different broadcasts. Like we watch the same thing twice and just no that's talk about true. the color. <laughs> it's not true. We watched the, the Super Bowl was on both TVs because it's the only thing on television. Nope. The last... Three games we watched. Because they timed them out so that those are the only games on. So why did we need both televisions playing the same game? So that we would feel like a bar. We did. We, yeah, did, we feel did feel like a bar. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm talking about. She doesn't understand. Bria. She doesn't get no, it. she doesn't understand. She doesn't get it. You, know you clearly haven't watched enough games. You still got to watch not. More. I guess not. You got to double up next year. <laughs> okay, Dylan, what are your final thoughts for us uh, until we send you back in here? On... Anything, football, lions, anything, the podcast. This is your open mic. This is your time to say whatever you want. You have the floor. All your friends are going to be listening. Yeah, they're going to freeze it on. And me. you're freezing right now. Yeah, I'm nervous. I'm just going to sit here and drink my wine. Um, um, My final thoughts are I'm actually very excited for next season. I'm a little nervous about how much pre football football we are going to need to consume. I'm excited for the outdoor speaker to watch football outside, outdoor TV. All of, oh, all we're gonna get a new. Above. She's talking about we're getting a new speaker for the patio so that we can listen yeah. to, to pre football. Football is preseason. Yes. Uh, well, hey, I'm I don't know. It can start any time. Do you know who you're talking? In, about? in about a week and a half, oh the God. draft combine starts in Jeez. Indianapolis. Okay. So we're gonna find out some of these rookies that are coming into the league. We need to know more information. I even like kind of care about that. Like I hate that I want to know what we're like. Yeah, we need to know who we're gonna draft. Walking we into draft. like, yep. Frig. You Frig guys, right. Frig is right. Yeah. Anyway, I guess to I, the... before you leave, yes, I, I think you owe Tyler an apology. I think so too. Because I you're so because disagree. you're now understanding what it was all about. But I, and I think be in you're this... quite dismissive of your newest passion at that time. Yeah, we got a big fan here now. She's got her own jersey. <laughs> yeah. She's going out to get her own jersey. You get your own you're jersey. Going out to the get players my own jersey. whose jersey you're getting are already getting traded. Like this has come a long <laughs> way. Isn't Jeff getting me a jersey? Yeah. Uh remember Jeff Gustafson? <laughs> yep. Yeah, he won an Aiden Hutchinson jersey. So she's getting that Aiden Hutchinson jersey. Oh. Yeah. It was his 50th birthday on Saturday night. Oh, how do you win the jersey? Uh, he just sat at a bar for eight hours. Oh. Yeah. Would never know. That's that how you win most jerseys when you win. just Drink beer all day, most of the time. I feel like I really had a good out, and then I lost oh, this it. is it. This is little, you, like you said. He gave you the mic. Talk whatever you want. I know, but I had a good closing statement, and then, as per usual, we all spoke over each other, and I lost it. We're gonna move on to the next topic after you're done. I don't think you have that many more interesting things. To we do. do but... Let's get on to after this season. <laughs> yeah. What what do what are our expectations? What do you expect in the off season? What are you most looking forward to in the off season going into next year? I was very heartbroken over the result. I was so invested in seeing the Chiefs lose. Yeah. Just for my own spite. Like that was all I was kind of hoping for once the lines were out. I wanted to see little Brock Purdy win. That was the that's the Disney story in there, right? A thousand percent. Yeah. 
Mr. Irrelevant comes in and he wins. He beats the big bad Chiefs. David versus Goliath. No one's rooting for Goliath except for the people in Kansas City. Everybody else is rooting for San Francisco. I think they will be back in the playoffs. Obviously, like they are a talented team in all aspects, not just like the Kansas City Chiefs have Mahomes and Kelsey in a good defense. The San Francisco 49ers have everybody good on both sides of the ball, and they're just waiting for Brock Purdy to make his statement, his big statement. He has made big statements, but they're waiting for his big statement. But that's not what I'm excited for next year. I'm excited for C.J. Stroud. What is he going to do with the Houston Texans next year? Um, I'm excited about Anthony Richardson coming. We we always start our season previews with the AFC South because it's the worst division. Next year, it's like Trevor Lawrence, Jaguars, um, C.J. Stroud, Texans, Anthony Richardson, Colts, and then what's the Tennessee Titans are probably the the worst team in that division. We don't need to talk about them. But that division is on like that's an exciting division in terms of court, young quarterbacks that are going to be here for 15 years. For sure. Like I'm I'm excited for that. I'm excited for the Lions versus the Packers next year because the Packers are back. They're not going to be a, a shitty team that creeps up on anybody. They're Jordan Love is going to bring the Packers back to where they were when they had Aaron Rodgers, when they had Brett Favre. Isn't that bad news? It's very bad news for the Lions. Like very bad news. It's I'm actually very worried about them taking back the NFC North and both of us making the playoffs, but them getting the two seed and then us getting like the seventh seed. Yeah. I think we're gonna see some more veteran players moving. Mike Evans, Derek Henry. Yeah. There's gonna be some slight shifting of players. Once I start to see the 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 trades happen, the signings happen. Then I'll start to get a little more excited on next season because right now it's just looking at how things ended last year and which teams have the trajectory going up, which teams have the trajectory going down. The Eagles, for example, I don't see why they're going to get better. Bengals. Bengals get their quarterback back, though. That's what I mean. It's like they were, they were, but can they keep all the receivers? Eagles. Yeah. They were as like because T. Higgins, they're, they're, he's the number one on any other team. He's their number two wide receiver. He's probably going to leave. So I, I think. First of all, I think Mike Evans goes to like a contending team and actually gets his Super Bowl shot, whether that be like the New York Jets or the Lions could use him. The Lions need a second wide receiver. Like Jameson Williams is good for stretching the field, but we need a guy that's going to be as good as St. Brown on the the low um, turn-in routes. An- another big name, Justin Jefferson said, until the quarterback is resolved, he's not signing an extension. Yeah. And so, Kirk Cousins could be. They're saying that Kirk Cousins might go to San Francisco next year. Like, it's, yeah, there's a lot of movement. There's, there's a lot of things they're going to trying to get Devonte Adams out of uh, Oakland. Or sorry, yeah. or out of Las Vegas. Vegas yep. Um, Vegas doesn't have a quarterback. Jimmy Jimmy Garoppolo. They're expecting to release him. He was just signed or sorry suspended for two games to start yeah. next season. But he's not expected to be on a team next year. So uh, there's a lot of player movements that's going to happen. That's going to make this. A ve- like Justin Fields, the Bears have the first overall pick this year. Justin Justin Fields is was their number one pick two years ago, three years ago, and him maybe not going back to the Bears is going to be huge. Like everything up to the draft is going to change the entire yeah. landscape of the NFL. That's what year, I mean. So which once is the, I start the best league, this this domino effect of signings, trades, sign, uh, you know, drafts. Then I'll start to get real pumped on it, right? Yeah, it's kind of stagnant so, until then. It's all prospect. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Potential. Pot- yeah, potential. But stagnant? there's another one. It's all. Um, ah. I know what you're lawyers saying. Lawyers use it all the time. Point. Lawyers use it all the time. Oh. Yeah. oh, lawyers. What does the word lawyers use all the time? Lots of them. Hearsay. Oh, is it hearsay? It goes with that. Um. So can I ask a question? Yeah. How speculating? That's. That's speculation. That is Spe- a lawyer. Speculation. Word. Speculation. Yeah. What's your question? I think speculating is actually it. Um, how does the draft order work? The worst team gets the first pick. So the like so that means the Lions each team the Lions have like the 27th, 28th yeah. pick. No, it's not. Oh, Sorry, I meant opposite. Yeah. You get right. opposite. So yeah. the Bears speaking of which, yeah, go. I heard something. I don't know if it's for this year. I don't know if it's for next year. And I don't know if maybe I dreamt this and it's just made up completely. <laughs> I hope this I heard something that the bottom eight teams get a extra round of drafting before free agency signings. And they're talking about them getting additional cap space. 
I haven't heard any of this. No. So maybe I made this up or it was just somebody. I, talking I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. It sounds like it, it also like Roger Goodell came out to, he always has like a press conference at Super Bowl time where he explains like, this is what we're thinking about maybe doing in like two or three years. Yeah. So maybe that was part of that, but um, I don't know why they'd get an extra like draft pick. If you lose free agents, you get a draft pick inherently anyways. Yeah, it was just the after the uh, the final round of drafting, the bottom eight teams they get one more round yeah. before everybody else gets take yeah. go after all the free agents. So, if, so to answer your question, the worse you finish during the regular season, the better your pick draft pick is. So, if you finish last place, you right. get the first pick. Okay. If you finish second last place, you get the second pick. And then, the how does free agents work? Free agency is whoever like, what's money. The opposite of free agents on a team. Free agency is when your contract is up. When your contract, like, so yeah. when you enter the league, it's basically a four-year contract. When that contract is up, you either sign with that. Tyler and I are in. free agents right now. Well, we're free agents. Right now, we're NFL free agents. We're free agents. Can't Anybody can sign us. Well, You're an NFL we, free agent. Who, this is oh, why there was like some, love is blind some or like, something. TV show we were watching, and the guy's like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm an NFL, NFL free, free agent. agent. I'm like, that's the easiest thing in the world to say because you're not wrong. You are an NFL free agent. I'm an NFL free agent. Dylan's an NFL free but agent. But that's what I don't understand. So you're saying you get more, you you get additional picks for free if you're free agent if you're, to leave your team than- Yes. If So if you draft, so for instance, if Aiden Hutchinson in three years, his contract's up in four years. So in, in two more years, he leaves. Yeah. Then because he left after his first um, spout or stint with the team- they say, "Hey, your your best player left. We're going to give you like a third round pick." It's not equivalent to what you want with an Aiden Hutchinson, but it's something. It's like instead of losing a guy because he wants to go somewhere else, you're not your, your whole team's not going to fall to shambles. How does it work when players have a preference? Is it totally out of their hands, or do they get to like money? Money changes everything, and also like if you are a young player, the um, franchise tag. If you're a young player, the team can franchise tag you, which means that you can't go, but you're also going to make top four salary for your position damn yeah but you only get signed for one year and with football that's difficult because you get injured so usually guys want to sign for longer like four years guaranteed because if you get injured yeah, after one you year still you still get paid yeah so another um, thing i'm curious to see how it works out we won't see it how it works out for this year but it's over the next coming years how players coming out of college are going to be either more mature, more improved, or worse now that they're starting to get big money. These NIL deals. Yeah. Mm. Well, players will probably stop, and you see this in basketball as well, players will probably stop um, wanting to get drafted. Like They'll probably stay another year in college because they can make $2 million there. Um, <laughs> in education. Okay, there's no way you're having this conversation. That You know they're not going to classes, right? Well, they probably should. But they're not. And also, if you can go to the NFL and make $5 million a year, why would you go sit in science class? So that when they're 38 years old, they know how to read. When they're 38 years old, they're probably worth $400 million. Would still be nice to know how to read. Sure. I mean, this could go on forever. I, You're right with most, like 90% no, of the players. No, 90% of the players should probably get an education. But the guys that are, are making money off of this name image likeness deals. That's not the priority. They're not. Yeah. Like they're why, the Yeah. yeah. Can I give you that. a feel good story then Dylan would love one. Von Miller. He took chicken sciences in college. What because does that Because he mean? thought that's going to be the easiest courses. In the it's end, actually, he ended up liking it. He runs yeah. a chicken farms now too. Yeah, he runs chicken farms now. Yeah, one million. He story. only took it because he thought it's going to be the easiest ride through college. And it paid but off. But he ended up learning a bunch of stuff. He got into it, and it worked out well for him. See, Aiden, if you're listening, Aiden. hope you took some courses. He went to Michigan. He took a lot of courses. Smart boy. Smart boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Puya. Anything left to say before we leave everybody for the off season and we go to Mexico for vacation? Are you you and I going, or yeah, just you and me? Okay. On All the right. company dime, Jordan's no, paying we'll, for it. We'll record a podcast down there. No, we don't want to do that. I do. We're on I vacay. Two bottles of these, these podcasts are the only time I get to talk to you. I don't. We can't. I know, but we can't. We can't drink Matus in Matus. Mexico. Why? They don't have it there. Of course they do. They do not. There's but no way. Have, but do they have. They have Matus in Mexico. I I was drinking in Europe. You're drinking Matus in Europe? Yeah, it, it Spanish, comes from Portugal. Yeah, Portugal. Yeah. What's the stuff you brought? Here, Sh- Shakasa. 
Yeah, do they have that? Kishasa. Kishasa. There it is. Did yeah. you try it? We haven't tried it yet, no. Take a sip. I'm not going to do it right now. Okay. Well, <laughs> no, that's all I got. Opening that's the podcast. end of our season. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, we apologize again for being one week late, but I think we're better for it, honestly. I think we're better for it. Um, no, we're not. Puy is like, no, we're not. We weren't better for it. But hey, listen, we got jobs that actually pay us money, so we can't just be doing this shit for free for everybody. It's on our dime. Thank you for listening. We will be back um, eight, four weeks before NFL kickoff to do our preseason breakdowns, um, which are probably usually our better episodes because it's just we're we're as equally factual and on point as everybody else because it's just a guessing game. Yeah, we just copy what they say. That's exactly. where we get our info from. Yeah. So it's you can listen to us instead of having to listen to everybody else. It'll be shorter. If anyone's made it this far, then just congrats. I no one. It's just the three of us. Maybe my parents listen. See everyone in September. Who his parents don't listen? No, they don't know about it. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Thank you very much. Uh see you in like five months. Hey, if you're a fan of Formula One, then I've got the perfect podcast for you. The Pit Stop Podcast, presented by the Ordinary Podcasting Network. After every single race of the Formula One schedule, Jordan and Tyler will break it down, give you some news, analysis, insight, before answering your questions and setting you up for the next race. That's the Pit Stop Podcast, available everywhere you get your podcasts. Running Down the Clock is brought to you by the Ordinary Podcast Network and is every Thursday running until the week after the Super Bowl. We hope you enjoyed enough to subscribe and tune in again next week.